everybody, and welcome to episode number nine. Yes, episode number nine of Creating Your Career with Marla J. Alberti. Hope everybody's doing good, and welcome back. So, we are interviewing today, super excited, my business and personal photographer, yes, Paul Stewart of Paul Stewart Photography. Say hey, everybody, Paul. Hey, what's going on, everybody? So I know Paul and his wife from an organization I used to belong to, and I just remain friends with them. And when I say I use Paul for everything, every event, you know, you guys know I hold my major conference. I have different things I got going on. I use Paul for everything, my headshots, everything. So we're going to talk about how did he get started in the photography field and how he's growing and creating his career. So guys, you know, I love to read the bio. So I'm going to read the bio word for word so you can get the information in. Then we're going to jump right in, Paul, okay? Cool. All right. So Paul Stewart Photography is a husband and wife-owned business providing premium images to Northeast Florida's organizations, corporations, families, and nonprofits. Paul and his team, <clears throat> excuse me, a professionals bring a consistent vision, supporting and strengthening your visual content. I love that. Branding and marketing strategies. Paul's corporate background and expertise in photography ensures your project is executed professionally, efficiently, and in superior presentation of your brand. So Paul is talking about bringing your brand out. We're going to talk about that, Paul. All cool. right, so let's get started. So tell us a little bit of background about Paul. Before we jump into the photography piece, tell us you know, a brief history about you up until now. Sure, no worries. So although I reside here in Jacksonville, Jacksonville is not my original home. I'm originally from St. Petersburg, Florida. That's where I was born and raised and grew up. I transitioned from there into the military. I spent about eight years in the Navy. And after which I just, I, I stayed here in Jacksonville and I resided here. Um, you know, I built my family here in Jacksonville. Um, my background is more corporate America. Um, I work for several different large mortgage companies here in Jacksonville. And while in the, in the mortgage industry, I just kind of lost the passion and drive for that corporate environment. Mm. And it was time to change. Mm. Okay. So, guys, you know, you, you know, throughout the um, interview, guys, you guys know me by now. I listen to keywords, and you say you lost that drive. That, does that mm -hmm. happen to a lot of us? I think it does. I know. I know. I, I understand. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's there, just, right? I think it, even from a man, even in a management perspective, you yeah. know, although I was managing people, mm -hmm. it was one day just the whole idea of what it would be like to be able to sign the front of the check and not the back of the check. Yeah. And it, that was like a light bulb for me. Yeah. You know, what if, what if this company shuts down and I'm solely dependent on them for income mm. and it just, it, it just resonated in my, in my, in my being. Yeah. Yeah, and that I'm so I'm so glad you said that. You you guys know how we just flow with these conversations. I'm so glad you said that because a lot of times people look at oh well you want to be an entrepreneur you want to do this you want to do that but it's it's a it's a flow to it. it's a steady pace to it. It doesn't mean if they just run off and do something. You gotta create your career career, and that's right. what Paul is doing, right? So right. what what is your what leads to the next question? What is your career? Well, what do you do with this? <laughs> I am a photographer. I am a photographer. We specialize in, in headshots and event photography. Mm -hmm. um, what we do is we solve the problem of providing professional headshots, personal branding um, mm. for business professionals and just professionals. You know, we can set up an on location studio and do perform headshots, whether it's for individuals or groups. Uh, we have fast turnarounds. Our clients are able to select and pick their images on site, which mm -hmm. provides them for a great experience. And, you know, we love what we do. We're very passionate about what we do. And we, we love to serve your next headshot. Okay. I love that. So key words here, guys. Notice how he said on site. So you mean tell me if I'm taking my pictures, because I know this, I've been through this myself. If I'm <laughs> taking my pictures, I can pick my picture right then and there from your, from your system, your laptop, and you'll know exactly what I want. I don't have to wait what, three, four, five days or even a couple of weeks to get the proofs back and then pick, you can pick it right there. Right. We've tailored everything more towards the corporate environment because we mm -hmm. understand how busy corporate professionals are. So yes. we do provide that option. That doesn't appeal for everybody because in a, in a busy environment, in a busy day, sometimes execs are not able to sit down and pick the picture, but we give them an option. Just having the availability to go through and look and making a quick selection 
it does make the process easier for them. We set up that on location studio. We have lighting. We have your choice of various color backdrops. And so we want to we want to build an image and a look that's going to be, you know, essential to your branding. Okay. And that's what we do. I love that. It's like that tailor made professional brand that they're, that you're trying to build and bring out of that person. I, I love that. So I can talk for days because, guys, I told you, I've, I've, ex you know, you guys know me by now. I have experienced this. So I know what Paul is talking about. I'm not just doing this interview because I'm trying to figure it out. You know, I know I've, I, he is my photographer and this is real. So if you're interested in getting to this field, let's talk about it. What sure. is your, what was your path to this? Cause you, you left corporate America, but like, did you just wake up one morning? Oh, I want to do photography. How did you even ease into this field? Because it's a very broad field, and it's not that easy to get into because, especially here in Jacksonville, I mean, there's tons of photographers everywhere. Well, so how did well, you ease into this field? How did you start to, talk, start to do this? You know, I like to say, actually, photography was something I discovered. You know, mm. I had no plan on being a photographer whatsoever. Mm -hmm. What happened is, as I mentioned before, at that time, being newly married, one of the things that happened when you first get married, you know, you just tend to take a lot of pictures of family. So one day, actually, after going to church, I took the family to the beach. I had the kids in suits and they were walking down the beach and I did a couple snapshots with a point and shoot camera. Mm. We got so many reviews and so many accolades on those pictures that it just made me want to know more about photography. Mm. And so I, I put the bug, the bug in my wife's ear, the buzz in her ear that um, I think I wanted a higher end camera. And um, that next year, our first wedding anniversary, she surprised me with a my first Nikon camera. Um, and that was the start of it. I, at that point, I still had no plans to be a photographer. And um, what happened is she has her brother stays in Delaware and he came down for um, about a week or so. And he had some friends from home that came over to visit. And it was a young couple that came over and they saw my camera sitting on the counter. And the guy pulled me to the side and he was like, he said, man, are you, you a photographer? I said, no, I just take pictures of my, my family. And um, he said, man, that camera looked like it can take a whole lot of nice pictures. And, you know, they were kind of on a budget and they just wanted somebody to come and do a couple snaps for the wedding. I was like, no, nah, I'm not ready for that. This guy kept calling me. He kept calling me over and over and over. He said, man, I just need a few shots and a few shots. So I talked to the wife and we kind of thought about it because, you know, weddings are huge and that's something that you don't want to play with. That's that's that one moment in time that is yes. so essential, especially for the bride and the family. So I agreed to do it, you know, so we did it. And from that first wedding, you know, I studied a little bit right before, but I, that was my first time doing anything like that. But, you know, I'm, I'm thankful, you know, everything turned out great. And from that one wedding, we booked about three weddings out of that church. And that's how the business was, was, was born because at that point I wasn't even thinking about doing photography as a business. So then what happened from there is still while working in corporate management, um, on the weekend I would do weddings, I would do events and parties, and this was a supplemental income. And, and that's where the, the transition began to occur, um, where, you know, it's, it's, it's beginning to compete with my passion to, to, you know, get that director's position in, in, in the office. You know, it just, it wasn't the same. You know, back home where I'm from in St. Petersburg, I grew up around water. One of my greatest passions back home was fishing. I love to fish. And the moment I, the moment I began to have choices between going out and picking up my fishing pole and going fishing and rather wanting to take pictures, that's when I knew something changed. <laughs> and that's why I saw that passion really born. And so, I just began to study and study photography and wanted to get better and better and better. I, I began to get a hold of any resources I could, um, whether it was courses, whether it was online tutorials. And I began to partner with other people in the city just to learn. I offered to, to, to just, hey man, let me just carry your bags on the shoot so I can just learn and see what you do. I made myself accessible. I made myself pliable in any way, shape or form just to learn. It wasn't about money at that point. I didn't know much. Let me just learn. Let me just carry your bags. Let me just be there. And and from that, I just began to grow and develop. That was the start. Wow. Okay. So I, I can just lock in right there. But it's okay. only a 30-minute talk show. <laughs> Did you hear that? Did you hear the theme there? Sounds like to me, he just made the move. Okay. So after church, 
went out to the beach, started taking pictures of the family, then an opportunity presented itself. You weren't even ready. So guys, I hope you I hope you're listening to that. A lot of times we wait till we have all the degrees, all certifications. We wait till we have all this stuff to just start. Okay. But he wasn't even ready. Someone asked him to do a photography, do photography at their wedding. This man is not a professional photographer, hasn't taken a photography class, but he saw the camera. Like, hey, I need you to do my wedding. And from that, mm-hmm. it just skyrocketed from there. So just think about if he would have said no. So many times we say no. Mm-hmm. And like, oh, I'm not ready. I'm not ready for that. I'm not ready for that. When are you going to ever be ready? So if you think right. about that, Paul, like, you you weren't ready, but you just did it. You just went out there and you did it. That's the that's been the that is the ongoing theme of all of my shows is just do it. Do, who mm-hmm. cares if you fail? Who cares what happens? I'm sure you made some mistakes along the way. Mm-hmm. And like you said mm-hmm. that you've taken classes, you did the research. I love how you said that you said, Hey, I'll carry your photo bag just to go out and sit on the set with you. Mm-hmm. And that's what it's about. I love how you said that. Now, while you were sitting on the set and you're and you're shadowing these other photographers, what skills did you learn? Because what does it take to be a photographer? Because, like you said, you you didn't know anything. But now that you've come along and you're growing your business and you're continuing mm-hmm. to create the career of photography, what 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 someone that is interested in photography and they just all they have is their iPhone? <laughs> mm-hmm. What 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 skills do we need to jump into this career into this field? So- so what I would say, one of the things about photography, photography is the study of light. Mm. And so to me, it, it has two components to it. Mm. it. It basically has the component of the technical side, which is how to properly use that camera to get um, an accurate picture. Um, and then it's the artistic side that allows you to take that picture based on the image that you're trying to create. So it's twofold. So the skill set, I would say, one, is you got to get a basic understanding of just photography of the camera, the basic, basic um, photography skills. But that's just the foundation, because once you master that or begin to grow and mature in the skills, the skills of using a the camera, there's a lot of other components that it takes to make a successful photography business. One first is going to be people skills. Mm-hmm. You've got to know how to communicate with clients and it, and it depends on what what audience is you got to know who your target target audience is me i'm thankful because i had a corporate background and so looking at my corporate background i've kind of i'm not saying that we don't do weddings but we, we we definitely would do a wedding but in capitalizing on my experience i'm 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 more um i'm, I'm greater in a corporate environment so i took that that background experience and allowed me to use that with people skills and communicating with corporations to get you know those corporate jobs so people skills is a big part you got to know how to talk to people you got to know how to deal with your client every client is different you got to be able to communicate effectively you got to be able to find out what is their their vision you know a photographer shouldn't just go and just start snapping and taking pictures based on what they see you know what is what is that bride or that 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 mother's expectation of, of how she wants her pictures to look, you know, that, that's huge. And you got to sit down and dialogue about that. So people's skills are huge. Um, and then it's, it's just always good to have mentors. You know, a mentor is always going to help you get to the next level. Um, it is always somebody that knows something more than you. And photography is just so vast. Although, you know, I may be one type of photographer, there are many others that may be stronger in other areas because there's many genres of photography. You know, whether you're talking about uh, microstop photography, where someone goes out and takes pictures of a, the Capitol building or fire hydrants or whatever, or you can have someone that shoots a model, someone that shoots a bride, someone that shoots food, someone that shoots fashion, someone that shoots nature. All of these are major aspects of photography, and there's different skill sets. There's different there's different things that it takes to execute each of those jobs. Somebody may say, hey, I like to take pictures, but I'm not a people person. Well, you may it may be better for you to be a nature photographer. You know, it just depends. It depends on where you are. But but the the beauty of photography, it, it for those that are artistic or those that just have a passion for it. The, the one thing that draw me to photography is that it allows you to take that one moment with that camera 
and capture that moment in time. You never know. You never know when you want to go back to that moment. You think about your family members. Yeah. When you know, I hate to say it, but but we're all on that same conveyor belt that it's going to be a point in time that we're not going to be here anymore. And it's going to be your your loved ones is going to really look for those pictures to cherish those moments. That's what it's all about. That's what it's all about. Yes. Oh, my God. So I could eat that alive. So a few things, because that kind of goes into the interest points, too. And um, so people skills, people mm -hmm. skills, people skills. you got to know how to communicate. I put like a, a little meme out there on Instagram the other day saying if you can think, if you can read and you can talk, you're a deadly weapon. Seriously. Yes. And, and, and you've got to be able to communicate with people because everyone is not on the same level and every yes. like you said every client wants something different every client's not going to be nice and sweet <laughs> and yes. every client's not going to be you know the hard person either at the same time you got to be able to know what that client wants and i love how you said if you're not a people person it's okay you can go take a picture of nature mm -hmm. I, I think about when you look at magazines mm -hmm. and like you, said, you look at food those are all pictures that someone had to take Take exactly. a picture of, the, of, of a phone. Take a picture of of a books and, and, mm -hmm. and, and different things that you see advertised. So if you're not that people person, you may need to figure out or you need to figure out what is your thing that you want to take a picture of. And like you said, you start out in weddings, not saying that he won't do weddings, guys. He will do weddings. But you know you found your niche in, okay, I'm going to do corporate photography. And like example, I'm going to just divert mm -hmm. a little bit. Those pictures behind you. You took those pictures behind you, I'm assuming, correct? Of course, yeah, that's my family, yes. yes. Yes, do you guys, look at that. Aren't those gorgeous, those those pictures are beautiful. Look at those beautiful headshots. So you just found what it is you need, but how did he do that? I hope everyone was listening. He did that by mentoring. He did mm -hmm. that by studying. He did that by looking at other people and watching other people. You gotta, mm -hmm. you gotta know that you don't know it all. You, you don't know, and you will, do you, Paul, do you think you know it all right now? Do you think you're, yeah, I mean, right, you know, Malcolm, Malcolm Gladwell says it takes, you know, they did the study, it takes 10,000 hours to, to mm -hmm. study something, and there's there's other researchers that have challenged right. that study, of course. Right. There's other books about that, you know, but you, regardless if it takes 10,000 hours or 20 hours, because someone else mm -hmm. did the research on 20 hours, mm -hmm. you've got to still study. OK, mm -hmm. and you got to mm -hmm. learn the field, even if you don't become an expert, you got to know what you're doing in that exactly. particular area. And you exactly. guys know me, I'm not stuck on one area. Uh, however, you still got to understand and continue to grow and continue to learn. You know, it's my favorite word, hashtag learn. So mm -hmm. I just love, love, love that, Paul, how you said you just and you continue to do that. Right. You continue to collaborate. So have you done any recent collaborations with other photographers in the city lately mm -hmm. or um, or different venues? Definitely. I mean, even um, when, when I do an event, I usually most always use to carry a second photographer or a wedding. Um, mm. I've got a couple, couple other photographers now I'm working with on some projects um, coming up in the next few months. Wow. We're looking at doing some headshot campaigns. Where we may, um, you know, book out a facility and offer, you know, headshots at a, at a lower rate uh, just to capture more people. Yeah. Um, but we've got some things in, in the works. But I was just thinking, you know, you know, there's a huge part about this whole transition and getting to where I am now. Yeah. Because, um, you know, the transition was something because I mentioned where I was in corporate America. But the biggest thing is how do you make that transition from corporate America to going full time? And so that was that was huge for me. You know, first and foremost, I, I would say just if you got a spouse, you, you got to be on the same page with your spouse because that's a huge transition. You know, you're talking about over 50 percent of your income that's going to potentially change unless you just got some plan. So, I mean, for us, the, the first thing was just having some level of savings to prepare, pre begin to prepare for that transition. But that savings is going to run out. So you, you definitely have to have a plan. So for me, I know initially. Um, I knew that I understood how to take good pictures, but do I know business? That was the whole other piece, you know, you, you know, because you got to know business to be a successful business person. So here in here in Jacksonville, um, I got exposed to an organization, Jack's Bridges, uh, which is an entrepreneur program that 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 I knew would teach me the foundation to of how to do business. You know, what's the difference between a business plan to a business model? So. I registered and got connected in some classes. Um, 
that, along with just a lot of volunteering, just begin to build a platform for gaining greater mentors, learning how to make, um, you know, just, just how to do business. So Jack's Bridges had a lot of key core classes, you know, that taught me how to build my business model. So it was a great experience, and I recommend that for, for anybody here in Jacksonville or anywhere across the nation. Plug into your chamber of commerce, look in your city, find resources. It's, it's not always so expensive. There may be resources at your fingertips, whether let's say you're the small business association. Um, there's, there's, there's resources that may be available to you that can help you. And that may be the place where to start at. That is so true. And guys, he mentioned uh, the Jacksonville Chamber. We're going to put a link in there for Jacksonville, but every major city has a, some type of chamber. So you want to research your chamber in your local area. And he is so right. Um, these resources are free. There's a lot of stuff out there for free. Yes. It, now, what's the saying? It takes money to make money. Yes, it does. Right. We're not right. going to sugarcoat that. <laughs> yeah. It does take money to make money. However, there are so many free resources out there, such as this one, Creating Your Career. This is free, guys. YouTube is free. Log on mm -hmm. to the YouTube channel. This is why I do these videos, because it's all about creating what you want. And I want to, we're going to get to the last fun question here in a second, but I want to pinpoint what you said earlier. The transition of coming mm -hmm. from corporate America to the photography field. And like mm -hmm. you said, you had to, have, number one, you said you had to have a spouse. You had your spouse, that beautiful, mm -hmm. beautiful picture there in the middle. Mm -hmm. Right. That's her. <laughs> mm -hmm. So you had your spouse mm -hmm. and you guys had to be on the same page. Right. Correct. So Correct. you're like, OK, you know what? 50 percent of the income is about to be gone. But then that put a tinker in your head. Like, I got to work now. I got to exactly. hustle. Because exactly. I, I, I was watching. Um, I watch all types of videos and stuff. And and um, I watched uh, something. DJ Khaled. Yes, I'm going to quote DJ Khaled. DJ Khaled okay. said, I got to hustle. I got to feed my family. I got to eat. You know, my family wants hard. food, you know, yeah. so you got to eat, right? You got to yeah. eat. <laughs> so, yeah. so you got to so get true. out there and do what you got to do. <laughs> so true. That's what you got to yeah. do. You got to get out there and eat. You got to do what you got to do. So, so many yeah. people think it's hard, and it is hard, but you got to have the drive to get out there and do it. We're not saying quit your job yeah. tomorrow. You got to use wisdom and common sense, okay? But All you right. Know what? <laughs> That's a that's a good point because and it, it was huge that shift that mindset shift from going to right. corporate America to entrepreneurship. What what does that mean? What does that look like? Okay, you get a regular paycheck. Yeah. You know how much you're getting from pay paycheck to paycheck. Yeah. So in the entrepreneurial world, you don't have that consistency. You've got to build and make that consistency. So what does that mean? Okay, how much do I want to make by the end of the year? Then how much do I want to make? What does that translate per month? What does that translate per week? How many leads do I need to get to equal that amount? And, and that's how you drive. And you, you have to set goals. You got to have a schedule. It's, it's, it's a grind. I mean, you have to have a plan. You know, I have a virtual assistant working with me now on my schedule. You know, I have the, you know, I, every day it starts with, you know, in the morning, prospecting, looking for leads, you know, trying to build relationships with corporations. It's work. It's, 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 it's not easy, but it's doable and it's rewarding. And I'm thankful to be able to do what I love. Oh, my God. Again, guys, it's only 30 minutes. I can talk forever. You guys know I can talk. <laughs> but I love what you just said. It is rewarding because it's something that's in your heart. I'm a big believer in following the heart. You know, because when you follow the heart, everything else follows. When you, when you follow money, it doesn't follow too well. You need to follow nope. the heart. So, so I love it. And and I, one key, one word that 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 um came out of everything you just said to me is patience, because this mm. stuff doesn't happen overnight. Yeah, it, it, no, doesn't, it, doesn't. it doesn't. You made that transition from corporate America just by taking pictures of your family, then then a wedding, and then things started unfolding for you because you followed your passion. But that didn't happen in one week. Yeah, yeah. let me let me clarify with that because the business yeah. that we went we the business was started in 2011. Wow. I didn't go full time until last year. Wow. 2017. There so that this is not an overnight process. Okay. You know. 2011. Okay, guys. 2000. You went, you went full time 2017. So what is that? Six years. Mm -hmm. Six years. That's six years you went full time. So you've been full time one year. So so seven years now. Seven mm -hmm. years, and and you're still rolling. We're still going. Correct. It takes time. It takes mm -hmm. time. Like I love when Kevin Hart. Matter of fact, Tiffany Haddish, the comedian, she just mm -hmm. said it. 
she's like, you know, um, I'm not new. She's like, I, I'm, yeah, I, I was in, I was in girls trip and you guys know me now, but I've been doing this for years. Mm -hmm. I've been yeah. a comedian for years. <laughs> I'm reading her book now. She's been doing this for years. Kevin Hart said mm -hmm. the same thing. Oh, y'all be all blow up now. I sell out stadiums now, but I was co a comedian 20 years ago. Y'all didn't know yeah. who I was. <laughs> yeah. You know, and we didn't. We didn't. So we yeah. always look at the end result. We got to remember the journey. The journey is what's important. Okay, guys, yeah. I can talk forever, but I hope you guys got a lot out of this. The, I think the main takeaways here are start. Don't be afraid. Have some type of foundational background. Talk to your spouse, or if you or if you're not married, you know, talk to get a, some type of mentor. Talk to your friends, family. Um, talk to um, get a business a business partner. Go to the local um, business development centers, the SBA, your chamber of commerce. Get advice. This stuff is free. Look at resources like this when creating your career. So, Paul, before we end, and I'm gonna give you opportunity for people to ask you, you know, for, for you to mention to people how can they get in contact with you but tell the world what's one thing that we don't know about paul stewart that you want the world to know one fun one fact thing. um i would say an interesting fact about me is that i lived in bahrain for like a year oh wow so, yeah, okay and for there. those who don't know where's bahrain <laughs> bahrain is over in the middle east the Persian, it's in the persian gulf Okay. Yeah. Okay. I'm I'm actually a Persian and Gulf War veteran. So. Wow, veteran, mm -hmm. fellow veteran. I'm a mm -hmm. veteran myself. So thank you for your service, sir. Yes, ma'am. Yes, so look at that. We're dealing with a veteran corporate photographer. <laughs> <laughs> Guys, yes, I love this. Thank you so much, Paul, for this interview. So tell everyone how can they get in contact with you? What? In, remember, this is a evergreen video, so that people can look at sure. this two years from now. So tell them how can they get in contact with you? What are some things that that you have ongoing that that maybe people can uh, follow you? Sure, sure, sure. Our website um, is at www.paulstewartphotography.com. Um, our Direct contact phone number is 904-274-0234. Um, you can find us on Facebook at Paul Stewart Photography Jacks. Um, some of the recent projects we have that should be upcoming, um, several different um, women conferences that are here in the city will be showcasing and, and covering event photography. We're doing a lot of projects with the Shut the Fear campaign and then also with other local photographers. But um, you'll see us out in the limelight. You know, that's what we do. We, we take pictures of events and headshots. So we'd love okay. to do your next headshot. Okay, guys, those links, I'm going to uh, put all his links in the uh, description down below. So make sure you click on that. Um, like he said, he's working with many different things. He's, um, you know, my Imagine Conference happens every February. He is the photographer for that. If you want to see that those works, go out to my um, www.imaginewomensconf.com. Go look at, I put like 100 plus pictures out there. Those are all Paul. Go out there and look at the work and call them and book them, okay? All right, Paul. Well, thank you so much, everybody. We'll see you next month for episode 10, another awesome guest I have coming up. So I'm excited, guys, and take care, everybody. Bye. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you.